previously in Finero. If you're sick, he understands. Receive your healing now. If you came on clutches, I want you to exercise yourself without clutches. Do something you could not do. Walk if you must. God is healing right now. Blind eyes are seeing. Deaf ears are hearing. The sick are getting healed right now. Oh, somebody's walking. Praise God. Praise God. Receive life. Receive strength. That pain leaves. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. If you are here and you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you have been in your own strength and you have discovered today that you are not really born again, tonight you want to make it right, come here. He says, if you lift me up, I'll draw men to myself. Wow. God is starting to touch some of you right now. He's filling you with power. Power the house! Demons are leaving. Witchcraft is leaving. Somebody had a mental problem here. God is delivering you. Whatever spirit has been following you, tonight it has been judged. Power the house! Deliverance is taking place. Deliverance is taking place. Those demons that had followed you, that were standing in your way for marriage, success, I cast them now. Spirits of poverty, go in the mighty name of Jesus. He says, at the same time, a fine vineyard will appear. There is something to sing about. I, the Lord, tend it. I keep it well watered. I keep careful watch over it so that no one can damage it. I'm not angry. I care. Even if it gives me thistles and thorn bushes, I'll just pull them out and burn those stones and bushels and I will continue with it because I need to tend my vine. When you read the context of Isaiah 118, it was giving a figure of a man who was walking away from God because he was laden with a lot of iniquity and judged himself of guilt. And as he walked away because he felt he deserved not the mercy of God, God still reaches out to him and tells him, come now, let us reason together. For though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though ye be red like crimson, shall they be wool. I want to help you. But this was a man running away from God because he was guilty. He says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liability to the assaults of temptation. But one who has been tempted in every respect as we are yet without sinning. That is why Jesus comes in the body. Because if he has not experienced it, he cannot understand it. So it behoved him to be like unto his brethren, that he might be merciful and faithful, a high priest in the things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Jesus was not qualified to take away our sin if he had not felt how we feel when we are weak. Because every priest must be patient with those that are ignorant and error out of the way. Every man of God must be patient with people. The church of Jesus was not called to point fingers. The church of Jesus was called for reconciliation. For to wit was God in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not counting their sins upon them. And Paul says, and now brethren, we have been committed unto us the word of reconciliation.
that's the word that we are supposed to be preaching because God has done that through Christ from the beginning of the world. And now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled. What's this reconciliation? God's hand will always be out here. The Bible says, for he has made himself to be seen for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. He takes your place. Oh, what a love. Your righteousness is your own works. God's righteousness is what he imputes on you by faith in him. The Bible says in righteousness, you shall be established. I told people righteousness is not just a doctrine, it's a weapon. He calls it the breastplate of righteousness. Not your own righteousness, but the righteousness of God. It's a breastplate. It's a protective element. It's an armor. It's part of the force of the fullness of the armor of God. Knowing that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He says in righteousness, you shall be established. And thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear and from terror. For it shall not come nigh thee. Because you carry the righteousness which is of God, it was imputed on you, not because of what you did, but by what he did. And if they come, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee, they shall fall for your sake. For behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and bringeth forth the instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. Who are you to lay another charge? on another man's servant. For if he falls, he falls before God. And if he stands, he stands before God. But yeah, God shall hold on him up. He is able to make him stand. And he says, my tongue shall talk of thy righteousness, for they are confounded, who? Your enemies. Every time you impute righteousness on you and speak of the righteousness of God upon your life, Satan is confounded. They that hate you are confounded. Your weaknesses are confounded. Confounded means confused and put in disarray. The Bible says, for they shall be brought unto shame. They that seek to hurt you. There is nothing as powerful as being in the middle of a storm and you proclaim his righteousness off your tongue and say, I am the righteousness of God.